Whether you're building a tiny microservice for an internal tool or architecting a massive SaaS platform used by thousands, there's one key factor you can't overlook, and that is how your API communicates with developers. Think of your API as a conversation. If the conversation is confusing, vague, or inconsistent, developers are going to walk away frustrated. On the other hand, if it's clear, consistent, and helpful, they'll come back time and time again. We're going to explore the art and science of designing API responses. By the end, you'll know how to structure your responses so they're both developer-friendly and easy to maintain in the long run. Let's get started. First up is arguably the most important point, structure. A predictable, logical structure lays the foundation for any good API response. This is where you show developers exactly what they can expect to get back from you every single time. When designing the shape of your response, ask yourself four questions. Was the request successful? What data is being returned? Are there additional details about the response? If something went wrong, how can the developer fix it? One popular approach is to include top-level fields like status, data, meta, and error. Status immediately tells clients if the request was successful or not. No more hunting around inside data or error to guess the outcome. Data contains the main payload, whatever your API is actually returning to the user. Meta holds additional context about the request and response, like timestamps, request IDs, or even performance metrics. Thanks to the error field, if something does go wrong, developers know exactly where to look for actionable details. Consistency is key here. If you decide to label a field status in one endpoint, don't rename it status lower dash code or result in another. Stick to one pattern across all endpoints, so developers aren't left scratching their heads when they switch from, let's say, your user endpoint to your orders endpoint. Ever come across a 400 bad request and have no idea which part of your request was actually bad? This is a classic pitfall in API design. While standard HTTP status codes like 200, 201, and 404 are essential, they only paint part of the picture. You also want to include human-readable, developer-focused error messages to remove any guesswork. Avoid generic error messages like something went wrong or an error occurred. They're useless to the developer. Instead, be specific. Identify what field or value caused the error and, if possible, how to fix it. If a parameter is missing, tell them which one. If a date is in the wrong format, provide an example of what the correct format should look like. Let's talk about metadata. Metadata might seem like extra overhead at first, but trust me, it's a lifesaver. It can store details that developers might not even realize that they need until they actually need it. For example, including rate limit metadata can prevent your users from hitting rate limit errors unexpectedly. Or you can include processing times to help them optimize requests, maybe by batching certain calls or caching results more aggressively. Why include metadata? Troubleshooting. If a developer is experiencing slow performance or unexpected behavior, having details like processing time milliseconds or a unique request ID can be enormously helpful for debugging. Managing quotas. Rate limit info like limit or remaining helps developers plan how often they can safely call your API without being blocked. A better dev experience. It builds trust. Developers love an API that openly shares how it's handling requests under the hood. When you have large datasets, say, a user table with millions of records or an endless product catalog, the last thing you want is to overwhelm your client. Rather than returning everything at once, break it down into smaller, more manageable chunks. Here is a common pagination response structure. Why it works. Performance. Your server won't get hammered by massive queries, and clients won't be stuck processing huge JSON blobs. Control. Developers can decide how many times they want to fetch per page, and they can easily navigate using next and prev links. Scalability. As your user base or dataset grows, you won't have to overhaul your endpoint design. Pagination scales naturally. If you need more advanced options, you can also include sorting, filtering, and field selection. 
This approach keeps your endpoint lean, efficient, and flexible. Hypermedia as the engine of application state is a fancy term for making your API responses self-descriptive. Essentially, each response includes links that show the developer how to interact with other parts of the API, making external documentation less critical. Why it matters? Reduced documentation. If your API spells out the next possible steps, like an update or delete link, developers don't need to guess how to form the next request. Easier exploration. Tools like Postman or any REST client can show the links right away, guiding the developer in a step-by-step -step fashion. Less guessing, more doing. Making your API self-explanatory means fewer 404s, fewer headaches, and overall a more intuitive integration process. We've all been there. You just want to update one field in a resource, but the API demands the entire object. This can lead to complications like accidentally overriding fields you never intended to touch. Enter the patch method. Designed for partial updates, patch lets you specify only the fields you want to change. But here's the kicker. Always confirm the result by returning the updated resource. That way, the client knows the new state of the data immediately. Why it's important? Reduced bandwidth. You're only sending the fields that changed. Fewer mistakes. You won't overwrite fields you never intended to change. Clear confirmation. By returning the updated resource, you eliminate any confusion about whether the update succeeded and what the current data looks like. One of the biggest complaints from developers is when an API sends back massive chunks of data that they don't need. This is especially problematic for mobile clients on limited data plans or slow connections. To solve this, allow clients to specify which fields they want in the response. Let's say you have an endpoint that returns a dozen fields, but the client only needs two. You can let them request exactly that, and your response might look like this. If you want to take your API to the next level, consider adopting an existing standard like JSON API. JSON API provides guidelines for how clients and servers should communicate, including how to structure top-level fields, handle relationships, and format error responses. This can be a huge win for any team looking to build a consistent, well-documented API quickly. Pros of using a standard Predictability Developers familiar with JSON API can jump into your endpoints without a steep learning curve. Less bike shedding. You don't have to spend ages arguing over naming conventions or field layouts. The standard is already set. Community. There are many libraries and tooling options that support JSON API out of the box, making it easier for developers to integrate. Of course, JSON API might not fit every scenario. But it's good to be aware of industry standards so you can borrow what works, like naming conventions, and leave what doesn't. Last but definitely not least, let's talk about caching. Modern apps often make the same requests over and over. If your server recalculates the exact same response each time, that's wasted CPU cycles and wasted money. By using HTTP cache headers, you can instruct clients to cache the response locally and only re-request data if something changes. Clients can use if non-match or if modified since in requests. If the data hasn't changed, the server returns a 304 not modified, telling the client to keep using the cached version. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more developer insights. I'd love to hear your own API design tips or horror stories in the comments section below. Share your experiences, what worked, what didn't, and what you wish you'd known earlier. Be seeing you in the next one.